Hi, Nick Houston here for Gotham Sound and Communications. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the Time Code Systems UltraSync 1. And uh, this will be a quick overview video. How do you set it up? What can it do? Uh, how do you integrate it with some of the other Time Code Systems products? Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below or to the side or whatever, wherever you leave comments on whatever platform you are watching, uh, please let us know. Is everything okay over there? Okay, great. Uh, anyway, so this is the Time Code Systems UltraSync. Uh, I can see a close-up right there. It is a time code generator and transceiver, so meaning it can both transmit time code and receive time code via the B-Link protocol between other time code systems uh, devices. So uh, other examples of what it can work with in terms of the wireless, uh, the pulse, the wave, the TRXs and TRX Plus and other ultra syncs. Uh, so transmitter and receiver can be a time code master, uh, can follow time code from another RF source, uh, all those things. So as you can see, the, the, the ultra sync is, is pretty small. Um, you see it there next to a 1965 George Washington quarter. Um, it's definitely much older than the, the time code system. Uh, in terms of what, uh, what it has on it, uh, it's got, this is the front, it's got three buttons. It's got your up and down button and your select button to move in and out of the menu. It's got a nice display there. Uh, in terms of time code in and out, it's got two um, mini DIN connectors, uh, one for time code in and out and one that's labeled for sync out. Uh, I, I'll show you this later, but the sync can be repurposed, not just for Genlock, but also for word clock and also can be an additional LTC output or time code output. Uh, and there is a USB-C um, port here to charge the internal battery and also for firmware updates. Uh, I just updated this this morning and uh, the update process is pretty darn simple. Um, and that's about it. It's got an internal battery on there. Uh, lasts for at least 25 hours. So you're gonna, if you're working longer than 25 hours, um, you know, you should probably take a nap or something like that. That is a long, long day. Um, but it's one of those guys where if you, if you forget to charge it one day, you're probably gonna be fine for all the next day or at least until lunch where you can get a little bit of charge on it. Anyway, uh, so let's turn it on. So how you turn it on is you push and hold the, uh, the, the big button here, the select button and it'll ask you to push up or down twice to turn it on. And if you do that, unlike me, you will actually turn it on. <clears throat> so there's the main screen. You've got the time code readout there. You've got the time code mode that you're in here, and then you've got your battery level. So we've got a pretty uh, good charge. Um, so in order to, I wanna show you a couple of different things. I wanna show you how to set the time code on this so you can just set it. I also want to show you how to jam time code from an external source. And then I want to show you how to uh, take time code from um, another uh, transmitter that's on the time code systems network, the B-Link network, um, so that it will link up with, with that all network. So um, to do that, you would go into the menu and what you want to find is, uh, you want to find the time code mode. Okay, so we have the options to be an RF slave, which if we're gonna be on the uh, B-Link network, uh, that's what we wanna be. We'll save that for later. You can have this be a, uh, its own, uh, you can have this be the transmitter, be the master. So you could set that to that. You can exit. You can have this free run and also take a jam, for an external jam. Uh, and you can also have it uh, run off of an external time code input. So I'm gonna set this to be free run and jam external. Okay, doesn't want us to be time code master. Sure, okay. Uh, so then in terms, of <clears throat> in terms of setting the time code ourselves, we'll go back into the menu, TC generator. We're not gonna set the user bits. Oops, what did I do? Hold on, sorry, time code mode. I want it to be free run jam external. Okay, now TC generator, set time code, and boom, you can set the time code to whatever you like. I'll just do a little bit right there. And now we've, we've got our time code going. So we can take that time code, put it wherever we want. Um, now, if we wanted to take time code from an external source, um, I've got this Deneke SB4, 
It's kind of an old standby. We would just take the time code out from here, okay? And we'd plug it into the LTC in and out. And then we'd push the down button uh, to jam the time code. There's, you have the option to jam from RF or we're gonna jam the LTC time code. So we set that. And now it's reading the uh, time code from the Denik ESB uh, GR2, pardon me. And it takes just a minute to check it out. But now, so now you can see that the time code from the Deneke and the UltraSync are indeed matching. And you can then take the UltraSync and go do whatever it is that you would like to do. Um, so before I show you the integration of the time code system stuff, I do want to show you one uh, feature that I think is important that you know where it is. Um, and that is where to, to adjust the uh, time code output level. Uh, most cameras, you're gonna, most cameras or time code devices, you're gonna wanna keep it at uh, standard level, which is uh, closer to line level. Um, but when you're using DSLRs and things that only have mic level inputs, you're gonna wanna be able to change that to mic level. So we'll just go into the menu and we'll take a look at the system settings and in there, there's a bunch of different things, but the thing that we are looking for is the LTC output level. Right now it's set to standard, um, but you also have the option for low level and mic level. So if you were doing uh, DSLR, mic level would be the way to go. Otherwise you'll blow out the track and potentially the time code will not work very well. So we'll li leave this at standard level. All right, so now integration with uh, other time code system products. Uh, I know on the live stream we said the wave, but we have a pulse here. Uh, the pulse is kind of like the wave on steroids. Um, it's got uh, ethernet in and out port. It's good for uh, gathering metadata on cameras and things like that. Um, it also will work with Sound Devices 6 series uh, as a, in order to do metadata gathering and also uh, be able to input information through the, through the pulse. Anyway, um, so we're gonna integrate with the pulse today. Um, so in order to do that, all I have to do is go into the, again, the time code mode, okay? And we're gonna set it to be RF slave on channel one for now. It doesn't have to be channel one, but it should match whatever your pulse is set to. And so you can see now it's uh, set to the same thing, 14, uh, 14 13, 50 approximately uh, as the time code system pulse. Now, the cool thing about when you integrate with the pulse or the wave is you have access to the, uh, the B-Link software. Okay, so if we look at our B-Link software, uh, I guess before we look at that, just to say what B-Link, uh, the software does, uh, it's an app that can run on either iOS or Android, uh, or you can use any web browser to access um, the web interface for the pulse or the wave uh, to be able to uh, make adjustments to any of the um, any of the time code systems products, there are some features that come with the pulse, specifically uh, with how it interacts with the uh, uh, with the SyncBack Pros that are not available in the Wave. But in terms of audio, the Wave typically has everything you would want. Uh, so anyway, so if we look at the B-Link software, uh, we see that we have kind of a heads-up display of all the different things on the network. Um, so we can check on the pulse, and from the pulse. Uh, we go to the settings down here, and we can see all the different things that it's doing. We could change the name of it. We could change the time code mode. We could set the time code. So if we wanted to set it to you know, four hours, uh, we could just send that, and we could quickly do that. Or if we wanted to set it to time of day, which is usually what people do, but you can see setting that on the pulse through um, the Blink Hub, uh, the B-Link Hub updates it everywhere. Okay, uh, and you can, up, you can do the same thing with all of these different settings right here. Okay, and so the nice thing about this with the UltraSync, or if you have multiple UltraSyncs, you're using one or two or three or four, is you can change the settings to color code them. So right now we're using the color Malachite, which we, but there are so many other ones, titanium, umber, uh, Terracotta Oriolan, I've never even heard of that. That's amazing, let's change to that. Um, so that you can color code them. So if you're doing different cameras, um, you can, 
very quickly look at them and say, ACAM is this. You can also change the name. So if we wanted it to be, instead of UltraSync, let's say we we're doing a camera, uh, we can change it so that each thing on this heads up display, and of course it has not refreshed yet. Let me just refresh that. But you can change it so that each heads up display has a, uh, that the heads up display, each camera would have a different name, could have a different color, um, and to, to make it very easy for you to take a look at. So there, the, the, cam the color is back. Uh, so you can see it says A camera. And this gives you a very quick readout as to what the, uh, the frame rate is, what you're outputting in terms of gen lock, and what the battery level is, uh, which is nice. So you can keep an eye on things as you go. Okay. The passcode is 1111. Pretty exciting. Okay. Um, and, that, and then you can also change the sync. Uh, so as I mentioned, in the sync options, you have the option to output any kind of gen lock all the way from 1080p down to PAL and NTSC. Uh, you can also do uh, another time code output, and you can do a word clock all the way from 44.1 up to 192. Uh, so depending on whatever it is you need, uh, you can do that. And that is how you would uh, set the time code, output the time code, and integrate uh, the UltraSync one uh, with the Timecode Systems Network. Um, Joey, do we have any questions? No. Fantastic. Um, so the coolest thing about this is obviously the small size. You know, if we look at it next to George Washington, again, it's pretty darn tiny. It's super light, so in a world where there's less and less space on cameras, um, having something small and light that does you know, not just time code, but also does gen lock uh, is pretty darn cool. It's pretty cheap, it's less than $300 uh, for one of those, and typically there are bundles available with different uh, transmitters and receivers. And it also does uh, the wireless time code connectivity. So if you have you know, one, on your, one on your audio rig and one on your camera, or one on each camera, and something like the pulse or the wave on your audio rig, uh, you're guaranteed to have time code that's in sync all the time. Um, anyway, so that's it. Thanks so much for watching about the UltraSync. To watch this video and other videos, uh, you can visit us online at gothamsound.tv. And if you follow us on Facebook and Twitter, uh, we will send you all of the latest and greatest news. Uh, if you have any ideas or questions, uh, you can put them in the comments below or to the left or to the right or wherever it is you put comments. Or you can always email info at gothamsound.com. We've got one question. We do have one question. Uh, came in last minute. Does this system integrate with the Movie Slate app? Does this system integrate with the Movie Slate app? Yes, you can use the Movie Slate app. Uh, not with just the UltraSync. You would have to use the Pulse or the Wave. Uh, and here's a question, uh, if, if you know the answer off the top of your head. Uh, when using Genlock on Alexa Mini, Mm -hmm. uh, would someone use 1080 or 1080p? Um, it depends what the, uh, so off the top of my head with the Alexa Mini and with any camera, it depends what the camera is set to. Uh, I haven't worked with the Alexa Mini specifically, but uh, 1080p is typically what a, a cinema camera would be in, so you'd want to use 1080p. Great, Anything that's else? all the questions. Great, okay, and I just wanna show one thing because people love socks. I can't get my leg that high. I have bacon socks on today, just so everybody knows. Okay, anyway, thanks so much for watching. I'm sure that was worth it. Have a good day.